Hi everybody, welcome back to the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure OCI course. In this lecture, we are discussing about gateways. What we are going to cover? We are going to cover what is gateway. Different type of gateways called internet gateway, NAT gateway, service gateway, dynamic routing gateway, and local peering gateway. That is what we are going to discuss. What is gateway? So as the name suggests, it is a gateway. It is a gate for your traffic. A gateway is your network component that allow data to flow from one network to another. So it's like a gate. If you wanted to, if you wanted to establish a communication between two different networks, we have a gate, which is called gateway that will allow the traffic without gateway. Traffic cannot flow from one network to another. A gateway is a gate between two networks. For example, you wanted to send the request from your OCI to internet or from OCI compute instances to on-prem network. So here we are discussing about two different networks. One is your OCI network and second is your web. So we wanted to send the traffic from OCI to internet. That is two different networks. Similarly, OCI compute instance to on-prem network. Again, OCI is a different network. On-prem is a different network. How we are going to communicate between these two networks? Why that gateway? Gateway serve as an entry and exit point for a network as all data going outside of a network must pass through it. So there are various types of gateways that we deal with. In OCI, one is called internet gateway. Second is called net gateway. Third is your service gateway. One is dynamic routing gateway. And then fifth one is your local peering gateway. So in further slides, I'm going to discuss all these gateways. Let's talk about the internet gateway. What internet gateway is? As the name represents internet. So whenever you need to send the traffic to the internet or you want the increase traffic inside your OCI from internet, you have to use a gateway called internet gateway. Internet gateway provide the public subnet direct access to the public endpoints on the internet. Meaning if you have one resource in a public subnet and you wanted to send the traffic to the internet from that resource, you will go through via the internet gateway. Connections can be initiated from the subnet or from the internet, meaning it's your bi-directional traffic. You can originate the traffic from OCI or the traffic can be originated from web to the OCI. The resource in the public subnet must have public IP address in order to access the web from OCI. One important thing, only one internet gateway is allowed per VCN. Each public subnet that needs to use the internet gateway must have a route table rule. So when you use the any gateway, when you use any gateway, the entry should be there in your routing rule. So each public subnet that need to use the internet gateway must have a route table rule that is specifying internet gateway as the target. For example, we have this architecture wherein we have a one VCN and in that VCN, we have a public subnet and private subnet. When we have a public, so public subnet and we create a resource in that public subnet that will have an IP address. And for example, this is my web server. The users want to send the traffic to the server and the server wants to communicate with the internet. So that traffic will flow via the internet gateway. And what we have to do, we have to specify a route rule in the routing table associated with this public subnet like this. The destination is your internet, which is 0 .0 0.0.0.0 and target will be internet gateway. So the traffic between web server and internet will go via that internet gateway. Without that, traffic is not allowed. The second is called NAT gateway. 
what NAT gateway is. NAT gateway is another gateway which allows your private subnet resources to communicate to the public endpoints on the internet. And it is your unidirectional, meaning only the traffic can be initiated from the subnet. It's not internet users can also send the traffic to your OCI resources, which is in the private subnet. No, if you want to use the NAT gateway, the traffic can be initiated from your OCI only, not the vice versa. The resources in the public subnet must have the public IP address. No, it's not the correct line, that's fine. Net gateway are basically used to download patches or other updates from the internet. Why do we need this net gateway? For example, you have a database resides in your private subnet and you wanted to apply some patches. So patches will be there on your internet so that download those patches from your private subnet. We can use the net gateway, which will allow me the internet access. OCI resources are not required to be in public subnet in order to access the internet because of NAT gateway. For example, we have this architecture wherein we have one private subnet wherein we have the database and database wants to download some patch from the internet. So that traffic will go via that NAT gateway and you see it's only unidirectional from OCI to the internet. But in order to work this, we have to make a route tool in my routing table, which is called, which is like the destination to destination will be 0 dot, 0 dot, 0 dot, 0 style 0 and route target will be your NAT gateway. Another is service gateway. So service gateway lets resource in your VCN access public OCI resources, for example, object storage, Oracle integration, et cetera, et cetera, but without using the internet, IGW, internet gateway or net gateway, meaning you have various OCI resources, which is your public resources. For example, the object storage, auditing service, Oracle integration and other stuff. If you want to communicate between your private resources, which is deployed in the private subnet and with the, with the, public resources of OCI, you will have to use the special gateway, service gateway. The traffic will not be routed via the public internet. However, the request, the traffic will be the private via the Oracle backbone. Routing travels over the OCI network fabric and never traverses over the internet. So that is the feature of your service gateway. Connections can be initiated only from the subnet, meaning if you wanted to consume the object storage REST API in the database, you can consume it from here, from private subnet, not the vice versa. It is again a unidirectional. But in order to work this, again, you have to make a entry in your route table, which will be like this. All Hyderabad services, Hyderabad is your reason. So depending on your reason, the reason you have to select, there will be a Suggestion, what reason? The reason will become automatically when you create a routing table, depending on the current reason you have. The all Hyderabad services on Oracle service network and route target will be your service gateway. Another is your dynamic routing gateway. Dynamic routing gateway plays a very, very important role. A dynamic routing gateway acts as a virtual router that provides a path for traffic between your on-prem network and VCN and can also be used to route traffic between two VCNs. For example, you have an on-prem application and you wanted to access that on-prem application from your OCI or you have two VCNs in a different reason. You want the resources of these two different VCNs to communicate with each other. Then in this case, we are going to use DRG, Dynamic Routing Gateway. For on-prem connection, we have two ways to communicate. One is VPN Connect and second is the Fast Connect. We can use either one. DRG is standalone, abjog, object and must be attached to your VCN. So here, if you see an example, we have a 
public subnet, we have a private subnet, and we have an on-prem application. If your database wants to communicate with any on-prem application for any specific reason, we will use the dynamic routing gateway via that side-to-side -side VPN for the fast connect. So the traffic will terminate to this DRG in order to have this communication established. Again, we have to have a routing rule in my routing table, which will be like the destination cider, the on-prem cider 192.168.0.0/16, and we have to specify the route target will be your dynamic routing gateway. There's another scenario, like I mentioned, it can be used to communicate with your on-prem as well as to communicate between two VCNs into different regions. Here also, you can use DRG, dynamic routing gateway. The next is your local peering gateway, what it is. So as the name suggests, local peering gateway. Local peering gateway allows to communicate between two VCNs, but in a same region. Two VCNs should not have the overlapping cider if you want to establish a local peering. You have to create LPG at VCN level and you have to configure the route rules in the route table in the respective subnet. For example, you have these two, two, uh, two VCNs in the same region, VCN1, VCN2. And in order to establish a communication, you will route via the LPG, LPG1, LPG2. You have to create the local peering gateway in VCN1. Similarly, you have to create another LPG in VCN2, and then you will make a entry like destination 192.168.0.0/16. The route route will be LPG1, and in this route table, you will make a rule which is your destination will be your first VCN 10.0.0.0/16 and via LPG2. So these this is all about your gateways. Thank you. Bye-bye.